Joining me now, Rich Lowry, editor of the National Review and a Fox News contributor, and Mark Hanna, a Democratic campaign veteran who worked on the Obama and the Kerry presidential campaigns. Gentlemen, welcome. Good to have Hi, you both here tonight. Thank uh, you, Martha. Mark, let me, let me start with you, if I may. Uh, you know, I mean, th those are numbers that the White House cannot feel great about. No, no, they can't. And, and frankly, they, they haven't moved much since this Fox News poll was taken last year. The numbers are very similar. Um, the one thing I do want to point out that I think bears mentioning is that this poll was conducted in literally the days following the, the Paris attacks. And so obviously terrorism was very foremost on the minds of Americans and there was a lot of anxiety and fear that's probably wound up with. It might have affected these numbers somewhat, but I think the reason this poll is so important is because it's not enough for the president to, to actually make Americans safer. That's priority number one, no question. It's but it's actually important for him to make them feel safer. What this poll shows is that, you know, I, I believe the president's done a lot to combat terrorism, whether it's defeating Anwar al-Awlaki in, in the, you know, the Arabian Peninsula and the al-Qaeda there and, and going after bin Laden mm -hmm. and drone strikes, killing more terrorists. But it's not all those things. I think they're real accomplishments as this administration can show off. But they, he also needs to make the American people feel yeah, safe. That, that's as an well, interesting point, because be I, think, I, I think that sort of, you know, fatherly role that is an essential part of the presidency when it comes to speaking to the nation and, and articulating the threats that we face to the nation is something that we have not seen a whole lot of. And, and Rich, when you look at these numbers, you know, I think you have to factor in the other things that are also part of the, the psyche right now, which is not being at the march in France, uh, the sort of focus on other things when clearly uh, so many leaders in the world believe that this is the most urgent thing before us. Yeah, well, there are two things. There are the facts and then, then there's the word and the symbolism. And the fact is, if you have terror groups taking over a wide swaths of territory in the Middle East, we're not safer. And that's reflected in the poll. And the fact is, even liberal foreign policy experts will admit that the plan against ISIS, such as it is in Iraq and Syria, is at best extremely tentative. So, of course, people aren't going to believe that he's going to do everything it takes to defeat uh, ISIS and other groups. And then there's the symbolism in the words. And look, Bush was guilty of some of this as well. But the administration's refusal increasingly ridiculous in recent days to even say the phrase radical Islam is insulting and childish. How stupid do they think we are? But Mark, you want to answer yeah. that? Mark, sorry, if I, yeah, no, I, I will. I think there's a lot of reluctance. People have tried to pigeonhole or buttonhole Eric Holder and get him to use this term. What what he's afraid, I think, that the, using this term is going to do is bring dishonor to the actual faith of Islam and let the terrorists not just hijack people and, and do violence to, to human beings, but also do violence to a religion. Let's not forget that the, that the police officer that died in, in Paris was Muslim and that his family was mourning. So when you focus on and fetishize and fixate on this term, Islamic extreme, extremism that the right seems to want to do, you're not doing any service or not doing any favors to the people that are following this religion yeah, but the problem, Mark, as, it, is that as it exists in reality. That, that may be, but there's plenty of Muslim leaders who are, are willing to call this exactly what it is. I mean, you know, you look at al-Sisi in Egypt or you look at the, uh, the mayor of Rotterdam in the Netherlands uh, who are telling people to wake up. And I think that's part of what we're seeing reflected in some of these numbers. Let's take a look at a couple more of these polls. President Obama on terrorism, 53% disapprove. President Obama's handling of ISIS, 56% disapprove. President Obama on foreign policy, 57% disapprove. But one of, the, one of the questions that comes to my mind when I look at those numbers, Rich, is does the, does the president care? Or does, does he feel like, you know what, I, I, I'm, in, I'm doing the right thing and I'm not going to worry about those numbers? I don't think he really cares that much. And look, he's done things on the war on terror that are important. He preserved most of the Bush counterterrorism policies after smearing them for years. That was a good thing. He got bin Laden. He droned a lot of people in the badlands of Pakistan. But you even heard this week, past weekend, Eric Holder using this phrase, core al-Qaeda. And what that means is, well, we droned a lot of people in the badlands of Pakistan, and that's the core, and everything else doesn't matter mm -hmm. so much. You know, that's the JV team. That's just the affiliates. Well, we just saw the JV team go into an editorial office in Paris and shoot people in cold blood. So this is a serious threat, too, that they've tried to discount. And I just think you get down yeah. to it. President Obama, he wanted to roll up the war on terror, say it's over. This is why we've had all the rhetoric about the tide of war receding. And what does he really care about? 
free community college. But here's college. the problem, and, and Mark, here's the problem, and, and, and Rich well, points it out. The, the problem has grown. I mean, you, you can talk about what you did. You can talk about Osama bin Laden. You can talk about right. Alaki, but those things are in the past. You have to deal with the existence right. of what happens right now in the world. And you look at what happened in Paris, right. and you look at what happened in Yemen. You look at what happened with Boko Haram killing 2,000 people, and you, you can't look the other way. This is something that has a common thread that needs to be addressed by the White House in for what it is. Yes. Well, and, and to your point, Mar I think you're absolutely right, Martha. And I think to your point, I think, you know, we just learned that today there was somebody in Ohio that had purchased uh, a ton of ammunition and guns and was planning to attack Congress, to actually go to D.C. and attack Congress. Yet, President Obama's FBI was working skillfully and coordinating in intelligence, and they just nabbed the guy. So I think that there are some real successes. I, I applaud Rich for actually acknowledging some of them uh, of this administration. And I think the problem really is, uh, is psychological. You know, you don't have this president using language like, for example, even Vice President Biden saying we're going to follow al Qaeda to the gates of hell. You have John Kerry saying that we're, you know, going to crush or destroy uh, these Mark, terrorists. But it's not, this it's president not a, doesn't it's not use a, language like that necessarily. And, and you know, t you can trivialize community college, uh, Rich, and you can triviali trivialize clean energy, but Americans on, on the day-to-day -day basis when they're in Iowa and Florida and Pennsylvania, they care a lot more about if their kid's getting a good education or if their cousin is going to get employed than whether or not they're going to be killed in a well, terrorist I'm just saying the president so care, that cares about I think those these things are important more than, than Thank you. we got to leave it there. Terror. Rich and Mark, good to have you both right. here. Thanks Thank for being you. here tonight.